Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin. We're rolling right into our second podcast for 2011. Uh, again, I have Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems and one of the developers of OpenMPI. Jeff, thanks again for being on the show. Hello. Yes, we're uh, back here in 2011, the second podcast, uh, getting right back up to speed after we took a little bit of a break in January. So uh, here we are with uh, another interesting topic uh, today. Yes, but before that, you can find us online at www.rce-cast.com. You can find old shows on there. Subscribe in iTunes or get an RSS feed in your RSS reader of choice. Uh, but yes, we have today a guest about what I think will be a pretty popular topic and is a... I've been seeing more and more users uh, at our site use it and request it. Uh, we have Travis uh, Oliphant uh, from Enthought. He was one of the developers of NumPy or NumPy. He can correct us on how that's actually said. It, it said NumPy. NumPy? NumPy? Okay. Yes. Okay, so Travis, why don't you go ahead and give us a little bit of background, um, your personal background, and then can roll right into what NumPy is. Okay. Well, thanks, Brock and Jeff. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Uh, NumPy uh, started basically while I was a graduate student. So I was a graduate student uh, studying inverse problems in medical imaging at the Mayo Clinic uh, and really, really enjoyed high-level language work while I was trying to do uh, image processing, basically, or medical image processing, and uh, found that I was a big user of MATLAB and it wasn't quite enough and had seen this nascent numeric Python work going on. Ended up getting heavily involved in the numeric Python community. Carried that with me as I took my first uh, academic post at Brigham Young University where I taught electrical and computer engineering. Um, ended up doing so much work in that NumPy community, uh, rewriting numeric Python to become NumPy uh, during some of that time. So much of that work kind of distanced me from the academic work. I ended up uh, deciding to go into industry after that and have been at NThought for about three years. Uh, at NThought, we, just, we do scientific computing consulting as well as training and uh, some products uh, in the space of the high-level scientific computing with a language like Python. So, Travis, I wonder if you could tell us, uh, you know, what exactly is NumPy? What's its goal? What does it do? But uh, give, it, give us the elevator pitch of what is it. Uh, that's great. Uh, NumPy basically provides uh, large data uh, capability for Python as well as fast calculations for, those, for elements or uh, information in those large data arrays. Uh, Python has lists and dictionaries. Uh, it also has an array object, but the array object has no calculation functions associated with it, and it's a single dimension. So NumPy is an n-dimensional array with fast calculations attached to it. And why exactly did you pick those specific abstractions? Does this reflect something that uh, you know, Python is natively not good at? Uh, basically, um, in some sense, NumPy evolved uh, from uh, the work of many folks. So numeric Python uh, started in 1995, and it sort of created those abstractions, the the fast calculations called UFUNCs, universal functions, or UFUNCs for short, and the array object, uh, those were already created by numeric Python. Uh, NumPy enhanced those, um, uh, kind of formalized them a little bit better than they were in numeric Python, but fundamentally didn't change anything. And numeric Python really grew out of a lot of other uh, array-like languages, uh, MATLAB, J, APL, uh, IDL. All of these were inspiration for numeric Python. So I guess I would say that uh, those two abstractions have kind of been uh, created multiple times by multiple people through the years, and Python did not have anything like that. So compared to using uh, the straight Python versus using the NumPy um, array objects and operators, how much faster is, is NumPy compared to regular Python? That's a good question. Uh, if you're doing a lot of element access, if you're just taking... Uh, elements and wanting to access each element individually and do operations on it from the Python level, uh, NumPy actually isn't going to be faster than using Python lists. Where, where NumPy really shines is if you have, say, 100 or more elements in a large data structure that you want to do math on. Let's say you have a sound wave uh, that could be considered a one-dimensional array, and you want to do a clipping operation on that sound, uh, or you want to do a filtering operation on that sound. Writing that code in Python uh, versus writing equivalent code that does the same thing in NumPy, you're going to be about anywhere from 50 to 100 times faster in using NumPy. But again, it's for large data sets. So then the big question is, how much better is this compared to writing C or Fortran or C++? 
Yeah, exactly. So it integrates with your Python code much, much e more easily. It integrates with Python code much, much more easily. So uh, you could write C or Fortran. Uh, a lot of people, if they know C or Fortran, are comfortable writing that and then trying to link that into Python. And in fact, when Python first came out, that's how a lot of people did their work. Python was a glue language between other pe people's C code and Fortran code. Uh, a lot more people really prefer to write in that high-level language. It's closer to the way we think. Um, and you don't have to remember as, as many arcane details about memory allocation and pointer arithmetic. And so NumPy allows you to do that all in Python. NumPy also creates objects that uh, you can think about the problem as a whole. So you can think about the sound wave as a single structure, as a single object, rather than thinking about each individual element at a, one at a time, as you would in C or Fortran. So do I infer from that? then that uh, you're implementing these, these algorithms and whatnot in C or, or Fortran or some uh, nicely optimized language behind uh, Python and then providing a nice abstracty high-level interface to it in Python? That's correct. One of the great things about Python is that it allows you to create your own built-in objects in the same language that Python was originally created in. So C Python, for example, you can write a C extension that creates a new object, just like a dictionary or a list or a tuple is an object in C when you're working from the Python command line, the C Python command line. NumPy is an object in C. So therefore, all the methods or all the operations that, you, that work seamlessly with NumPy arrays are in C, and that's how you get the really fast speeds to do what's called vectorized operations over a large amount of data. So what kind of operations do you provide? You said vectorize. Give us, uh, give us some examples. In our, yeah, the idea of vectorization. Vectors? Thanks. The idea of vectorization is really the key for this, uh, the high-level use of NumPy. Vectorization is when you take uh, two objects, like just to say an array of numbers from 1 to 100, and you take another array of numbers from 100 to 200, uh, and the same number of elements, you can just, with one expression, say A plus B, and get another array of the same number of elements where element by element the operation has taken place. So that's a vectorized operation. It's a lot of computation that's done with a single statement at the Python level. Uh, so that both conceptually lets you think of the problem at a higher level, so you're not worried about uh, for loops and pointer arithmetic uh, when you just want to say, I want to add these two vectors together or these two large data sets together. And then it also allows it to happen much faster because the actual calculations are done at the C level. I think you also asked what kind of functions are available. So there's a, a lot of functions available. NumPy itself provides some basic functions, add, subtract, basically everything in, uh, uh, say, a C99 uh, math library, uh, exponentiation, logarithms, uh, log 1p, uh, multiple, uh, and then all these standard uh, binary operations are provided. Other packages like SciPy provide even more functionality for special functions, um, NumPy itself also provides things like convolution, a basic one-dimensional conv convolve function. SciPy then adds to that and add, takes the same data structure and provides two-dimensional convolution, two-dimensional other image kind of image processing calculations as well. So you mentioned, uh, so you're talking about vectorization in there. That made me think of something else. I'm sure a lot of these things are optimized for uh, what we'd call the vector unit of a CPU or any of these new accelerators or like the Intel LRB project and stuff. Uh, are you focusing on any of this stuff in your C at the bottom? Do you rely on a third-party library? Yeah, another great question. Uh, a lot of we rely on third-party libraries when we can. For example, um, the distribution of NumPy that we ship inside the Nthought Python distribution links against the Math Kernel library, the Intel Math Kernel library, the MKL, uh, to provide fast operations for the matrix multiply or for uh, fast Fourier transforms, uh, but. At the low level, some of the other loops uh, really need to be optimized. They're a great place for somebody to come in and really uh, provide optimizations that aren't there at the moment. Uh, we do just rely on a C compiler at the moment. Uh, some people, I've seen projects out there to try to experiment with OpenMP or with uh, linking against additional libraries. I think some people have even created uh, uh, assembly code. Uh, it really is a pluggable architecture, and you can replace any of the low-level loops that NumPy uses to do the calculation with something else. Uh, you could do it on a GPU, you could do it on a vector machine, uh, but a lot of that work is, are extensions, and, and NumPy itself doesn't currently use any of that uh, in most distributions unless you're linking against something like a BLOS or an LA pack.